forgot what I was about to say. There was something that, um, oh, c continuing to do this, I'm just curious, like the motivation, like because of the way the market is now, people continue, you know, music is kind of so disposable, you know, it kind of comes and goes and, you know, a lot of artists and you've been in the game for, for, you know, for many years and I've seen, you know, the growth and how you've evolved and your music has changed and as you've always done what you do, but the music has always somehow remained fresh and you're still putting out projects and every album, every project, it can sound different. You know, like how, like, how do you stay motivated with that? Like how, because, you know, you have some artists who are new and they don't even want to put out stuff in there, but you're constantly putting out this project. It might be like a, you know, an EP or an album. And you're like, you're touring, you're doing three, four tours in a year. Like what motivates you within like this hip hop game to continue to put out these projects and tour them? That's a, that's a great question because it speaks to a few different things that I think are kind of important, at least important to me. Yeah. And um, well, one of those things is like, we're in a position that people allow us to. Yeah. They allow us to put out records mm. and they allow us to tour and they allow us to do shows. Our family lives are uh -huh. positioned in ways that allow for us to make this art and then go out and, and support the art by performing shows. And it, it, it's like, if, if you're in that position, why wouldn't you? Mm. You know, people, people are, at home dreaming about the day that they could do this yeah. this is a very special special thing that we're allowed to do you know what i'm saying and so it's like and so i and i love doing it so much it's like i don't know how i don't know even if i was like okay mm -hmm. it's time for me to do what else i know how to do and i'm gonna drive one of these large trucks right yeah, yeah. um i will still probably show up at ant's house and make songs yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. because why wouldn't i yeah. it's it's one of the, the one of the things that i enjoy doing Bro, it's like cracking codes and, and solving puzzles, yeah. making songs. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I love it. Nah, man, that's, dude, nah, you, you speaking, you, 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 you preaching right now, bro. <laughs> and so I feel like I'm going to do it until they fire me. Yeah. And then once they fire me, I'm still going to go do you still it. still going to do it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, until there's only, you know, until I'm the only person left that wants to hear my, to hear my shit. And even then, I might still keep going. You know not, what I'm saying? Like you off, but I can hear it in your writing, even when I hear you spitting, like, when you're spitting like that and you're coming up with these songs, I can hear it, like, there's something about when you hear a beat or having an idea to write a song. It's, you know, because sometimes motivation comes from different stuff. Oh, I want to get this, I want to get that. But when the motivation is the thing itself, the love for doing it, it just it just hits different sometimes, man. It just really, and there's there's artists out there, I feel like other artists can recognize that too. And I recognize for somebody that's been doing it and has been touring and, and putting out these projects, but to still continually be like, yo, I love this shit. Like you can tell the love is there and that's where it all kind of stems from, you know? Thank you, man. Very kind of you to say that. That's I, amazing. I, I'm having the time of my life and it's not easy though. It's that's also dope. hard, you know what I mean? Like, and, and so you just, I look at, but isn't that the beauty in it though? That's like, well, that's the sa yeah. you, I look at the sacrifice, yeah, and I even love the sacrifice. I yeah. love, I love the struggle of it sometimes. Like how we were talking before about, like yeah. you know, when you lose your voice on tour yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. that. It's like it's the worst feeling in the world, Bro. and I love that that is one of the worst feelings in the world. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like all I, part of it. because it's all part of it. It's like okay, I love to do this so much that I feel vulnerable when yeah. my voice is at eighty percent, seventy percent, sixty, fifty, whatever. Yeah. Uh, the fact that I feel so strongly about that lets me know that this is like, yeah, yeah. man, there's no stopping this. You know what yeah, I'm saying? That's, like, that's so dope. All right. So before we get out of here, I also have to ask you, um, because you talked about 80%, 70% voice. What are some of the things that you do? Because I just got off a tour and it was my first time doing like a, a, a headlining tour, performing like an hour every night. Um, and I went and I probably made a mistake, but I did like the first nine shows with no break, 10 shows, no break. And I was just like, yo, cause I thought I was like, that's oh, heavy. 14, yeah. you know, that's a four, lot. 14 shows. It'll be simple. I can get through it. But I hadn't, I hadn't done it. And I was kind of out of practice. And yeah. I, I made after um three or four shows, I was like, oh no, my throat, my voice. What are some of the things that you do to kind of not only physically, but mentally kind of keep yourself in check when you're on tour? That's a great question. Um, first, let's address the nine shows in a row. Yeah. <laughs> now, I am in a position of privilege to be able to dictate that I don't do that many shows in a row. You know, my, my I, I, at four, 
that's that's my that's yeah. my cutoff. I need a day off after four shows in a row. Um, and you know, we just try to make sure that we maneuver and and, and, and route it that way. Yeah. Um, but uh, sometimes you don't have that that opportunity. So if the first thing I want to tell you is if you got to do 15 shows in a row, because I've seen it, yeah. what you do is, for starters, you rem remind yourself, look, I'm the headliner. Uh -huh. So there goes 10% of my voice right there. Yeah. Because I'm going to go a little bit harder yeah. because I'm the headliner. I'm, yeah. I, I, you know what I mean? Like, So you already got to account for that yeah. and, and put yourself down to a 90. Yeah. Next, you know, you don't eat after the show, I think, is one of the main mm. things that happens to... That's so hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is until you figure out how to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like... And why, it's, why, it's why still even, you, it's still even hard for me. after the show? Because uh, when you go... When you go horizontal, when you go to bed, uh -huh. and, you're, and your body is still processing and, 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 and still, you know... Um, uh, uh, the, the acid, digesting yeah. the Digesting your food, mm -hmm. it... It's moving around acids, and and that's one of the ways that people kind of give themselves. Voice, it yeah. gives them acid reflux. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You you don't want to eat and then go to bed. Yeah. You don't want to eat before bed, no matter who you are. Yeah. But if you're an MC, you don't want to eat before you go to bed. So that's yeah. why I just tell people learn how to eat before the show instead yeah. of after. Yeah. And and it is hard. It's even hard for me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? There's yeah. there's times where I'm like slipping. I try to make sure it's only on a on a night where there's no show the next yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I got some recuperation. Yeah. Um. It, it makes it big difference you're right absolutely. huge difference you know obviously cigarettes and all the things that you know are bad for your lungs yeah. and your voice and your breath you want to get those out of out of there you know what i'm saying but like but 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 those are the main rules you know mm -hmm. there's secrets like i have pink grapefruit juice yeah yeah uh, in, a cup, <laughs> in a cup on stage yeah. ready as an emergency if i need to get rid of mucus in my throat but now we're getting all kind of like pseudo scientific with it yeah. I, but 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 hot tea lemon and honey yeah, you know you said hot tea on stage i keep that on stage and i sip yeah. that i go between sipping hot tea and water on stage yeah. um and then the other thing i i do is uh, i just try to hydrate as much as possible all the time and i try to get good sleep but though also yeah, no, that's very important the good sleep especially <laughs> if you old as fuck like me yeah yeah no nah, man <laughs> we and no nah, dude you are 200 percent right like you gotta you got to pace yourself. You know what I mean? You can't be out there like, oh, I'm going hard every night after the show. We're going to be like, dude, if you got, you know, you got 20 more of these or however many more, you better take it easy, relax. I feel like one of the things that helped me that I didn't really pay attention to this last time was just like mentally, I think anxiety kind of hurts your voice too. If oh. you're tense. Yeah. If you feel like if you're like if you're kind of like tense and you don't you have to relax yourself. You know what I mean? Relaxes your vocal cords. Yep. And and that's what also what I was addressing when I say when you're the headliner, some of your voice is already going to be hard yeah. because of you got you're the one that had to sell the tickets. Yeah. You're the one that's got to go last. You're the one that people are looking at like they're 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 judging everybody else against you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they're and and and, and look, people love underdogs. And yeah. so the people who are opening up for you always get to steal that shine from mm, you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's good. I'm not saying there's yeah, anything. Exactly. That's, that's, that's how it's supposed that. to be. Yeah, it's that's how it's supposed to be. They spot. push you. Yeah. And then so when you come out, you are forced to not mail it in. You, instead, yeah, yeah. you go extra. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's, and that, and that's, you just got to always keep an eye on that. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's facts, man. Well, man, thank you so much, bro, man. This was super amazing. Slug, San Francisco tonight, man. I appreciate you. The bars were incredible. Thank and, you. And uh, the information was incredible. Thank, Thank you, you, brother. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, man. It's always good to see you.